My name is Rick Green, and I'm an alumnus of the University of Virginia School of Medicine, class of 1970. It's my great pleasure to uh, be here today to uh, talk with Dr. Muncie Wiebe, Emeritus Professor in the Department of Medicine. And this is a project of our Medical Alumni Association to make sure that we honor our Emeritus Professors and gain from their knowledge. So Muncie, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to, to do anything with the Alumni Association. Excellent. Appreciate it. Let me start out by asking you, you're, you were a student here at the medical school, but tell me a little about how you stayed on the faculty. What, what were the, the impetus for you to stay on the faculty rather than go somewhere else? Well, I, I did go to other places before I, I came here. After I finished uh, medical school, I went to New York Hospital for two years for training. Came back as a fellow with Dr. Bert Level and then the chief residency in medicine. So I had that touch of teaching and patient care here and I loved uh, the university and I loved Charlottesville and I married a UVA nursing student uh, in 1955 and, and we both wanted to come back to Charlottesville but I went to the Army for six years, was involved with Army research at Walter Reed and then in San Juan, Puerto Rico and I actually took, when I decided to leave the Army, I took a, a associate professorship at Rutgers. They were just starting a medical school at Rutgers, and there were three of us in the Department of Medicine to develop it. And a faculty member here, Oscar Thorpe, decided to take a job out in Arizona. A spot opened here, and even though I had just moved to New Jersey, we were just building a house, I couldn't resist following my passion to come back to Charlottesville and Jean, my wife and I, decided we would do it and so in 1966 we came back uh, here to be on the faculty and I've stayed, been here ever since. Well, you, you bring up some, some points about mentorship, people you followed. Tell me about the people here that you particularly remember and served as mentors for you in your career. Well, I think early on uh, as a student, I, I worked with Oscar Thorpe, who was a hematologist, uh, internist, wonderful all-around person with many, many interests. And he was enthusiastic about everything he did. And uh, that got me going with him and with Dr. Bird Level, who was head of the hematology group was small, uh, but it was friendly and fun to work with, and Dr. Level was a mentor. Uh, there were, the faculty was very small then, but they all seemed to me to be like giants. I and mean, Julian Beckwith in cardiology was someone I loved, and um, though I didn't work with him in cardiology, I did work with him when I was chief resident. Whenever uh, we had a the chief residents in medicine used to do all the medical consultations. Julian Beckwith, if I called him, he was always right on the spot, right there, never hesitated. And so those, those were people that uh, were great clinicians, great teachers, fun to be with, and good, good people. They were just solid citizens. Well, I remember you as a master clinician, so you could have done anything in medicine, but what, what kept you in an academic setting? What was about academics that really excited you? Well, I'm glad you remember me as a master clinician. <laughs> that makes me feel good. But um, I liked a, a, a lot of the things, I liked the mixture of things that I was doing. Uh, I, I liked patient care. I loved working with students and re with residents. I liked the teaching aspect. And I had some research going that, that I liked very much. And it was this, this mixture of things that allowed me to, to stay interested and, and enough patient care to continue to develop my clinical skills. But it was the all-around uh, activities, uh, plus the people who were around were always fun to be with and uh, 
I think that's one of the attractions of academic medicine is to is to have so many uh, associates that are stimulating and are helpful to you. In thinking about your medical career, now from the standpoint of what you know over the years, would you have done anything differently? Anything in your career? Well, of course, you can always think of that. Could have worked harder on this or done more on that. I, I don't know that I would have changed the pathway. I never had a um, rigid pathway set up. I I kind of developed and and went with what seemed to be the thing that was most interest. Uh, and so I'm not sure that. I would have done anything any any differently because I'm, I think I reacted as to who I am and I probably would do the same things all over again. <laughs> You've seen many years and generations of medical students. There's always a concern that people change, medical students change over the decades and years. H have, have you noticed any major change in the students that are coming to University of Virginia or people going into medicine today? Well, our 60th reunion is occurring now. When I, there have been tremendous changes over the years since my class came in, if we start way back then in prehistoric times. But I think in those days the students were um, not as affluent, I think, as our class. Uh, they were largely from uh, Virginia. Uh, they were oriented toward, most of them, although there were a few specialists, most of them were oriented toward doing a year of internship and then going into practice. We did have some specialists come out of the class, though. And over the years, um, I hear about the changes in, in the students, uh, but when you deal, and, and of course I've been out of this now for seven or eight years of close contact with students. But in dealing with individual students, I, I found that they were pretty much the same. You know, they, were, they wanted to become good physicians. They were oriented toward patient care. But I think one of the things that, one of the big factors changing was the financial aspects, the assumption of uh, large debt, and what this did to their thinking in terms of career planning. But on the individual basis, I, I found the students were still, they were very well oriented toward doing good things, toward good patient care, uh, and I think the changes are noticeable more as groups rather than as, as individuals when you talk to individuals. Tell me a little about what you're doing now uh, outside of medicine or even in medicine. Well, in medicine, not a whole lot. I, I'm, I come in once a week to internal medicine residents morning report. This is where the residents present some new, newly admitted patients. It's run by um, Brian Wispelway, who's a brilliant, brilliant uh, internist clinician and I I'm kind of there to I think the residents like to see an older person there makes them feel good about it and and occasionally I will say something but I come into that because over the years in my roles in uh, internal medicine as a chief um, I always loved morning report I did it for many years here with Dr. Hook and then even after that uh, so I, I do that once a week. I do a few other things. Um, I've run, uh, here in, at the, in Charlottesville, we have what's called OLLI, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at UVA. Uh, and I am in the midst, uh, I've done this for seven years, I set up a course that's called uh, Health Topics of Interest to Everyone. These are mostly retired people who come, but I've had wonderful lecturers from UVA. I do a series of five 
uh, and we just had Bobby Chabra, who's head of orthopedics, just did one on the hand, but we've had on the eye, and, and we've had, and Randy Canterbury, Dean Randy Canterbury, is coming next week to talk about addiction, uh, and particularly in the elderly. So I do that, and um, aside from medicine, I now have just assumed the presidency of the Retired Faculty Association. That's not going to require a lot of time. So what I do is fool around the house, trying to now to get my swimming pool open and clean. Uh, and Jean, my wife, and I like to visit the grandchildren and have them come to visit. We go to plays and things. That's what's so great about Charlottesville. There are a lot of activities that you one can be a spectator for. We're sports fans. We like to go to sporting events. But being around the university really it, itself, I think, is is so invigorating. I'm, I'm sure for you, you found that over the over the years in participating. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful place. It has the activities have in in all areas. I mean, there are political speakers. Larry Sabato with his politics center for politics, the Miller Center, the theater, the athletic events. I mean, there's so many things you know you really can't go to, but so many, uh, but it's all here, and it's all, it's all great. So what would you say to a young man and woman, or woman who is uh, graduating from the university and thinking about a career in internal medicine? What advice would you give them today from, uh, from all of the many years that you've spent in this, uh, in this pursuit? Well, I think you just if they're already decided on internal medicine, then I think it's, they'd have to look at what it is that they feel will attract them and keep them interested in medicine. If it's mainly patient care, I think they, they should. My orientation is that somebody who's going into medicine and then into internal medicine should certainly be oriented toward patient care and caring for many different types of medical problems. Um, I think that if that person going into internal medicine also happens to be interested in teaching and staying in an academic environment, then I think they, uh, should, they should look for <clears throat> a place that's considered to be prestigious, that uh, there's so many of them now, then I think that one can get residencies and move ahead in academic medicine from many different places. But I think you, the general advice is work hard, try to establish varied interests to keep yourself uh, going. The quote burnout rate is high for physicians these days and I think it's in part because they don't achieve a balanced life. I think they can be too focused on all the details and hassles of running a practice or caring for patients, and there are many hassles, but one needs to have other interests to keep your sanity and your interest up and to be a better physician. So the values really haven't changed over the years? I they're about the same? So. I think they're the same, yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure to uh, talk with uh, Dr. Muncie Wiebe, Emeritus Professor of Internal Medicine at the University, and this is our Archives Project for our Medical Alumni Association. Muncie, thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoyed it.